Hey, what's going on today, guys? Today we are looking at the Camaro. So finally, I'm doing a video on how to LS swap this thing. The three plugs right here in the strut tower bar, most important plugs you gotta mess with. There's the firewall, she looks pretty good. Deleted the AC box, put my harness through the hole right there, two inch hole. There's my business, not trying to advertise or anything of that sort. <laughs> But yep, here's a shot of the engine bay, guys. She looks really good. I think she turned out amazing. So I ran the harness over the engine the best I could. I think that is the perfect way. It looks really clean. If I had a power steering pump, which I might add, actually, if I had that, it would probably look a lot better. But I got the bigger MAF. Had to rewire the harness for that. What you see is what you got, guys. So basically, these three plugs right here on the strut tower bar are your key. Also, the two inside of the passenger side. Now, here's a shot of the speed engineering headers, 241 milled heads, and that beautiful, beautiful Pontiac blue paint, guys. Got the LS6 cool packs, holding intake off of an LS1 engine from Australia. All right, so this is my underneath the passenger side floorboard situation right now. Usually the PCM is in the engine bay beside the AC box, but I decided to move it and mount it inside of the firewall. That way it's all clean inside the engine bay. I know there's a couple wires here and there you can kind of see, but when I put the carpet in and the body pieces back in on the interior, it will be nice and clean. Plus the glove box, I'm gonna cut out the back to fit that fuse box. But yeah, I made a custom plate to put that PCM against the plate that's in the engine bay. I got the six speed shift knob. I got the factory DLC port to work via wiring the standalone to the factory wiring. Now that works, gauges work, everything works guys. Got the C5 wheels mounted on the Camaro now. 275 by 40 by 18 in the rear. Beautiful chrome, beautiful stagger on these wheels. I love how they make the car sit. The front, however, are 245s by 45 by 17. Okay, everyone. I'm going to attach PDFs into the description that you can save, download, print, whatever you'd like. That way it can be a cheat sheet for you as you go about this F-Body V6 to V8 LS swap. So, I'm also going to put up on the screen right now and go to the picture of where they are and give a pin out of what the wires are. So you can either use this video or you can go in the description and you can download the PDF file for your own use. So basically that's going to be it guys. The three plugs in the engine bay and the two small plugs which are C230 and C220 inside of the passenger side. The three in the engine bay. That's what it's going to take to get this swap running. Hopefully you buy a good standalone with instructions like I did so it makes it easy. And with the pinouts along with the instructions from the standalone harness that you should order, I'll also put a description for the one I got. With those two things, you should be able to wire this car together and drive it. Now, one exception to this rule is if your fuel pump wiring has been eaten by a bunch of mice like mine was, I cut a hatch open for my fuel pump and discovered that. Now, if I wouldn't have found that, it would have never ran. So be careful guys, if it doesn't work, you got problems, you got short to grounds somewhere inside of the system. So just stay patient, follow the instructions and you should be good to go. So that's gonna be it for me guys. Thank you guys for watching this video. Like, comment, subscribe, let me know what you think. And stay tuned for more Hot Rodder videos. I enjoy doing this. I like helping you guys out with these swaps and everything. And I appreciate all of you guys' support. So like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.